Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about fasting times and what is the appropriate fasting time for you as an aging woman or maybe just a woman who's over the age of 50 and going through some seasonal hormonal changes. So if you're new, welcome. My name is Diane Parham. I'm a fasting mindset coach and the creator of the online course and community, The Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman. If you are not new, welcome back. I always love having you guys come back back to this channel and hang out with us here in this community. I always ask that if you haven't done so yet to please hit that subscribe button and then make sure that you are hitting that thumbs up button. That way this uh, video lets me know when you do those actions that you're interested in this kind of content and I will keep delivering that for everyone here in this community. And then I always love hearing from you guys in the comment section. So please make sure you take a second to let me know that you stopped by today. I love hearing from you and I love answering any questions that you might have. So today we are going to be talking about fasting times for women, specifically women over the age of 50 or women who are going through hormonal changes, usually perimenopause into menopause, and then we settle into the postmenopausal season. And what fasting time is appropriate for us? So what I thought I would do first is go over some of the very common fasting protocols. And if you're new to fasting, I'll explain what a protocol is really quickly. So a protocol is just the window of time that you're going to fast and the window of time that you're going to feast. And it all fits in for intermittent fasting, a 24 hour window. So we're breaking our 24 hour window up into two windows. Generally speaking, the fasting time is the bigger amount of time and the feasting time is the smaller amount of time. Today we are going to be talking about 13 hour fast, 16 hour fast, 18 hour fast, 20 hour fast, and 23 hour fast, more commonly referred to as OMAD or one meal a day. So let's get into these fasting times and what I feel uh, like are best for women and some of the benefits that these fasting protocols can have for us. So there has been some research out. I'm not sure how new it is. I'll link some articles um, in the description box below about uh, this finding here that the 13 hour fast. So if a woman who has had breast cancer fasts for at least 13 hours every night, the reoccurrence of breast cancer was very, very slim. So they did kind of a loose study, but hey, if it gives us hope, if we're breast cancer survivors, that if we fasted for at least 13 hours every day, that we could significantly reduce the chance of breast cancer reoccurring. I personally would fast for 13 hours a day. Check, just take a chance on the fact that that's actually going to work for me as well. So like I said, I'll link um, some articles about this uh, down below so you guys can read that for yourself, but like 13 hours, easy peasy. That just means you stop eating when you have your dinner at night and then you just count 13 hours forward and you don't put anything in your body that would disrupt or disrupt your fasted state until you hit that 13 hour mark. So what I always say is just don't snack at night and don't start your morning with some coffee with creamer and sugar in it and you have hit a 13 hour fast. You have to be pretty mindful about this because believe it or not, it's difficult to get to a 13 hour fast if you don't think about it because so many of us are just, you know, unconsciously putting things in our mouth or we wake up in the morning, we run to the coffee pot and we put things in our coffee and that would break a fast. So understand that you do have to kind of set some parameters around this, but 13 hour fast is pretty simple. If this is what you're hoping to get from that. And if you're not a breast cancer survivor, imagine what a 13 hour fast could do for you just to maintain some health benefits, right? So minimal, pretty easy to do. Then the 16 hour fast. So 16 hour fast means you're going to eat for eight hours. This one is another one that's kind of mainstream as well. Um, a lot of people in the fitness industry or um, athletic type of lifestyles really uh, benefit from the 16 hour fast. It's great for weight loss, fat loss, easy to manage around life events, and you're gonna get just a little bit bigger benefit from the 13 hour fast. So pretty easy to do. I like to fast 16 hours, that's my vacation fast. So when we go on vacation or away from home and we're doing things that are out of the norm, 16 hours is generally what I stick to. And then when I come home, I just go right back to my regular fasting time. So 16 hours is another one that should be pretty easy for most people to do. The 18 hour fast would be 18 hours of fasting, six hours of feasting. Again, great benefits for weight loss, fat loss, 
and you know can really help uh, your body become a little bit more metabolically flexible once you kind of get into a rhythm with fasting and you've reversed some of the things that were ailing you 18 hours is another one of those fasts it's pretty easy to do i generally do 18 hours of fasting when i am very um athletic minded so right now i'm i'm training for a half marathon an 18 hour fast would be one of those things that i would rely on just to get more nutrients in if i needed to get them so 18 hours is another one of those things that should not be too difficult to do just as an everyday lifestyle thing but let's get to some meat and potatoes of what i really uh recommend women commit to while they are feeling frustrated with the way that they're aging. So if you are a woman who is feeling stuck at a weight and you can't lose weight, you're feeling frustrated with maybe some body fat that's been accumulating on your body. If you are feeling like you're a little kind of groggy brains, meaning like your brain feels like it's not functioning the way it used to. If you're feeling like you're losing some energy or you're feeling just really down about the way you're aging, what I always recommend is the 20 hour fast and that is what I teach inside the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course. This is an amazing fasting protocol to follow. So 20 hours fasted, four hours of a feasting time. I call it the sweet spot for resetting your hunger hormones. So when we are going through seasonal hormonal changes, the hormones that really end up getting out of balance for us women are our hunger hormones. Leptin, insulin, ghrelin, and neuropeptides are the hormones that are really causing us the biggest problems. And if we can get those balanced out, that's when our body will start to really get back to that place where it's going to let go of weight and really start utilizing the fat that it was once storing and start utilizing it as an energy source. And that happens when we're in that 20-hour fast. What, the other thing that I love about the 20 hour fast is it can really help us simplify our eating window, right? So many of us are so confused about what eating style or genre we need to be following and we're not sure how food is really affecting our body. And so reducing that feasting window while you're taking advantage of all the benefits the fast can do can really help you identify some of those foods that might have become problematic to you as your hormones were changing. So it can really give you the opportunity to simplify that feasting window. And we're all busy. Like we don't want to be chasing down our next meal. And that four hour feasting window really does give our brain a break with what we have to do to kind of figure out and plan out meals and all those kind of things. And then I love the 20 hour fast also because you have a nice window to really have a flexible social life. So you still do have the opportunity to fit in, you know, dinner uh, events with family and friends. You have the opportunity to do some socializing and you don't feel like you're on a diet because you can really incorporate your fasting and your feasting times into your lifestyle. You do not have to uh, minimize your life in order to fast. And that's another one of the best benefits of the 20 hour fast as well. And then there's the 23 hour fast, or like I said, it's the one meal a day or what's often referred to as the OMAD. And that is 23 hours of fasting with one hour of feasting. So generally about one meal a day. The benefit of this is it just gives you a deeper opportunity for healing because you're spending a nice amount of time in that fasted state and you're sticking to like a what I call a rinse and repeat meal every day, the foods that you know are working for you. You don't have to put a lot of thought into it. You're just going to eat that one meal, replenish all those nutrients that your body needs. This is a great place for deeper healing as well. But the biggest determining factor of how long you should be fasting as a woman who is going through these aging and seasonal changes in your body is why. Why is it that you're searching intermittent fasting? Why is it that you're looking for some alternative lifestyle or some lifestyle changes? And when you can figure out your why, that will really help you determine your how right? Because there's research studies being done all the time. There are people who are going to tell you it's this way or the highway. There are going to be so much, there's going to be so much advice out there uh, for you to digest and take in that you're going to be confused. That's what happened to me when I first started looking into intermittent fasting, when I was trying to reverse my pre-diabetic state and a lot of the things that I was going through as well, transitioning through perimenopause into now where I'm at as a postmenopausal woman. So my why was I did not want to become a diabetic and I also did not want to 
continue the cognitive decline road that I was on. I wanted to be able to get my brain back, get my energy back, get my enthusiasm back, get my positive uh, way of living back. And so I went to the 20 hour fast because I wanted to reverse all of those things as quickly as possible while staying safe, not having to do anything too drastically and not having to step away from my life. So I fasted for 20 hours every day and feasted for four because I wanted to reverse all of the things that were ailing me, but I also wanted to be present and um, and an active participant in my life with my family. So do a little work on why it is you're searching out intermittent fasting. Do a little work on what it is you're actually willing to do to achieve what it is that you say that you want for yourself, and that will really help you determine your how. How are you going to practice this lifestyle? And what are you going to do when you start to feel better? Will you walk away from the thing that's really helped you get your life back because you're looking at it as a temporary thing? Or will you commit to stick to a lifestyle that you can maybe switch up some protocols when your life is changing? Or maybe you can just do the minimum for a while until you feel like you need to dive in a little deeper. That's really what we teach here in this community for our aging women. And I believe any woman who has the opportunity to live another day is also a woman who is aging. So there's no negative connotation to aging here in this community. It's an opportunity for us to live another day and get to our future self. So do a little work on why it is you're uh, researching intermittent fasting. Do a little work about uh, on why it is you want to improve some things in your life. And that will really help you decide how it is you're going to implement intermittent fasting into your lifestyle so that you can have an amazing future self and determine how well you want to age. That's what we do here in this community. If you're looking for some specific guidance or you'd like to be involved in a community type of uh, atmosphere or environment, we do teach an intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course where I do help you figure out your why so that you can determine your how and stick to something that will the benefits will just keep coming um, the longer you practice intermittent fasting. We launch a new course on the first Saturday of every month. All the information about our course you can find in the description box down below. If you find a good why, you connect that to yourself. The how part of intermittent fasting becomes so much easier on us because we are emotionally connected to the activities that we're partaking in every day so we can get the results that we're hoping for. Thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. I will see you back here on Monday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I love hearing from you guys, um, and I love answering your questions. So can't wait to see you guys in the comment section. I'll see you guys next week.